So if this bottle was inherently existent, it's like it dropped down from the sky, no causes and conditions, it exists by itself alone. Is it true? So take it to the extreme like that. Is it true? And then you think, well, of course not. It's manufactured. So in order to be manufactured, what do you need? A factory, people, raw product, a top, a label, water to put inside. Many, many parts go together in order to make this <coughs> bottle of water. Many parts. Okay? So when we talk about water bottle, we usually have an idea of something complete. The water bottle with the water inside. But we don't necessarily analyze it. Fernando was saying this morning, we relate to many sentient beings. Right? We should try and relate to all sentient beings. But we have a relationship with many sentient beings. When we use water, do we think of the number of sentient beings that produced the water? Do we think about it? We just think, money? I buy it. But say the people in the factory said, I don't want to do this job anymore. You know, I'm sick of this boss shouting at me. I'm leaving. And they all said, we're all leaving. So there's no water bottle factory anymore. There's no water anymore. And so you go to the shop and share one bottle of water and they say, no water. Why? Don't know, this factory just finished. So when we're drinking water, we don't think of the history. All the people involved in the making of this. Thank you very much. You know, how grateful I am that you put all this effort into making this for me. There's the action. You know, somebody visualized it. Water bottle, water. Somebody visualized it with a good motivation. I want to provide water for others. And then it had to be put into action. What do we do? Well, we have to manufacture a plant, we have to build a plant, we need people, how many people are we going to need, uh, where do we get the water from, what do we need to do to the water in order for it to be safe. This is all convention. But does it really exist in the way we think, like it just dropped down from the gods? No. Is it manufactured? Is it put together by many people and somebody's idea? Yes. So then, when you look for something existing by itself, without a relationship, you can't find it. It has a relationship to many other beings. And so, what I think we need to do is develop a feeling that there are so many beings involved in our life that have given benefits to us, what should we do back? What should we give back? You know? So they're all giving to us in the sense of electricity, water, roads. We just think, I pay taxes. But say those people say, I don't want to work on the roads anymore. This is a horrible job. My boss sh keeps shouting at me. I'm not doing this anymore. And they go on strike. They leave. Then the power people say, I'm not happy about this. Switch off the power. The water people say, you know, enough is enough, there's no power, there's no roads, we're also going on strike. So say all the people started leaving their jobs because they're not happy, well what would be the effect on us? On all the services that we receive but we don't even think about it. It's not even on our minds. Maria, Maria, she's a very good example, Maria goes down to the dining room to have a cup of coffee. Where does the coffee come from? It wasn't grown in Spain, right? It comes from a long way. So the people in the fields, in the, in the hot fields, have to pick the beans and roast it, and it has to be made into coffee. Somebody has to put it into a jar. It has to be exported, brought into Spain. I think it's inconceivable. How many people are involved in our lives? We never think about it, right? So I think once you start getting that feeling of interconnection, I move a little bit, also it moves other people a little bit. What about we started considering the roads, we started considering the water, 
the buildings, etc. You start to get this feeling of an inconceivable number of people involved in your life. Inconceivable, right? Because also it goes into the past. It's not just the roads now, the roads were made in the past. The railways were made in the past and then maintained until now. So if you keep calculating how many people, how many people, how many people, I think in the end you can't count. First of all, you have to get this feeling of connection, connectivity with others. Right? And then what it gives us is the benefits. But we may not think benefit. We may think, but they get paid for it. Right? But money isn't the only way that people receive reward. Many people get their reward from the creativity itself. They're not so interested in the money. They want to create something. So now, in order for us to create the appropriate feeling back, thank you very much everybody for what you've done, in order for us to create that connection and that correct feeling, we're grateful for what you've done, not you should have done it. Do you understand the feeling between the two? You should have made the roads because you got pay. You should have put the water in the bottle because you got paid for it. That's one attitude. And the other is, I'm extremely grateful that you did it. So looking at your world from the sense of gratefulness, gratitude. Not from the sense of, you should do it because you're paid, or why don't I have it? It's not fair. And that takes you back to your previous actions. If you didn't create the cause to experience the result, you don't experience it. So if you want to experience good things in the future, create the cause now in order to experience the result. If you are successful, you are successful because in the past you were generous. Right? We're going to talk about six professions later, but just a very simple example. Where does success come from? It must come from generosity. Right? Because when you're generous, you give your resources to others, the result is you get much more back. So, these attitudes that we're talking about, this sense of connectivity, the sense of gratitude and gratefulness to others, also helps to subdue the negative emotions. If you're really grateful to somebody, how can you abuse them? You know? It's very difficult, isn't it? If you like them, I'm grateful to you for what you're doing, then difficult to have negative emotions towards them, difficult to be jealous of them, difficult to be angry towards them.